This is going to be Ecclesiastes chapter 9. And we're going to look at the subject of the plans of an atheist. One of their plans is to escape the hand of God. In Ecclesiastes 1.9 it says, For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Notice what Solomon says here. It says, For all this I considered in my heart. He says all that stuff is in the hand of God. Now this goes contrary to the so-called wise men today who don't even want to retain God in their knowledge. They want to escape the hand of God. They want to be their own final authority. Everything is in the hand of God. Atheists hate that fact. But deep down they know that it's true. Because Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And Solomon says, No man knoweth either love or hatred, by all that is before them. Now for the Christian, many times, the Christian doesn't realize if a hard time he's going through is because he's being chastened by the Lord out of love, or if the devil is attacking him out of hatred, no man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Maybe God's just using the devil to chasten him. We don't know these things. The atheist who wants to escape the hand of God thinks that good things happening to him is simply karma, or what goes around comes around for something good that he did in the past. He doesn't want God's hand to be a part of anything in his life. He doesn't realize God is being long-suffering with him and giving him time to be saved. He doesn't want to realize that God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. But in Romans 2, 4 it says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. He doesn't realize God is long-suffering. The goodness of God is giving him time to get saved. At the same time, God can be letting him go unchecked on purpose and be punishing him that way. The longer he goes unchecked, the more he will stay in his sin many times. Is it either love or hatred? No man knoweth. The Christian tries to figure it out. The atheist pushes God out of it and simply believed what goes around comes around or that everything is just random. But they want to escape the hand of God. And all this Solomon is considering in his heart. Everything is in the hand of God. The atheists want to escape that hand. They want to be their own final authority. And the next thing, they want to delay the inevitable. To the atheist, this life is all that he has. His life may be even worth more to him than, than anything he has because it's all he has. And for a Christian, this isn't all that we've got. It's not all we're looking forward to. Scientists are looking for ways to live forever. We already know we are going to get a new body and live forever as a Christian. But the atheists and rich lost men look for ways to just keep delaying the inevitable, even much more so than a saved person would. It says in Ecclesiastes 9, 2, All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not, as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. There is one event that happeneth to the righteous and to the wicked. This event is death. All of us are going to die. A man that brought his bloody animal sacrifice, like Abel, would die the same death as a man that sacrificed to devils or brought the fruit of the ground like Cain. Now, the good man and the bad man both will die. In the church age, you got both saved people and lost people that die daily. The good and the sinner. The atheist 
dredge the day even more than a saved man because this life is all the atheist has. He wants to delay the inevitable. The sanctified Christian has a t desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, as Paul talks about. But for this Christ-rejecting world, this world that doesn't believe in God, all they have is this life. Ecclesiastes 9.3, This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. So the one event that happens to them all is death. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. The heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart where they live. Who can know it? The average man's heart is smaller than the Grinch's heart. But there's just never gets bigger. It doesn't get bigger at the end. It gets smaller. And it blows my mind how men can go all the way through life and their hearts and minds are full of madness and evil while they live. They don't give God a thought. Uh, I'm a wicked person, and I'm a sinner in the flesh, but but I, I'm God conscious. I think about God in everything. Everything that happens, I filter it through the scriptures. The atheist doesn't do this. He is his own final authority. He doesn't have to answer to anyone but himself. And this is why our government is so wicked. You have men that don't give a rip about what God says. They do this the entire time they live. And they're not thinking about death many times, but it's coming. All that will matter at that time is what you did with Jesus Christ when you die. It says in Ecclesiastes 9.4, For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. So there is hope for a man who is joined to all the living. He still has a chance to turn to God. A living weenie dog is better than a dead lion. It can walk, it can eat, it can see, it can hear. A bum on the street is better than a dead king that just died in his sins. The bum still has a chance to turn to God. Ecclesiastes 9.5, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the, remem the memory of them is forgotten. Now remember that Solomon is speaking in terms of things under the sun, as if this life is all there is. And in that sense, the dead know not anything. Even these celebrities who try to make themselves a name are forgotten. And I couldn't name any actors from the 1940s. I, can, I couldn't name any athletes from the 70s, hardly. I mean, I was, wasn't born in the 70s. I was born way later. So, I mean, I don't remember them. I wasn't here. Their memory is forgotten. And for my kids, their memory will really be forgotten. I mean, for the, the memory of them is forgotten. Neither have they any more a reward. If they won a NBA championship in the 60s and 70s, you know, what good is that going to do them? The dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9, 6, Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Everything you have, you leave behind at death. All of your portion, it stays on the earth. None of it is yours. It goes to your family or it goes on eBay it goes on Facebook Marketplace or at a yard sale. And your love and your hatred and your envy, all those emotions you had for or against somebody is perished and forgotten. It was all meaningless for a lost man. He, Nothing he did mattered for him in an eternal sense. It's all just vanity and gone. But the atheist... They just want to fulfill their heart's desire. The lost man's heart is full of the devil. He just goes around through life seeking to fulfill his heart's desire. And many times Christians can even do that. In Ecclesiastes 9, 7, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. It says, Go thy way. 
Go your way. Uh, many times people do what's right in their own eyes. That's what the book of Judges is about. When we do what's right in our own eyes and go the path that we think is best, we make a mess of it. But it says, eat thy bread with joy. Drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. Now in the sense of a Christian, you're trying to live right. You know you're going to heaven when you die. You believe in the Lord. So in this life, be happy with your portion. That's the way you can look at this. Eat your bread with joy. Be happy with what God's give you to eat. Drink thy wine with a merry heart. You know, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But this is all an atheist has. All he has is this material stuff to eat his favorite food. Drink the most expensive drinks. In Ecclesiastes 8 9, it says, Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. You know, the, for an atheist, his mind is on preserving, keeping his body looking good, his clothes looking good. It's all on these temporary things. And then it says in verse 9, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou, have, whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of thy vanity which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life, and, thy, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. This is so true. All the days of the life of thy vanity. It's just all vain. That yard you mow will be grown back in a week. That house you keep up will be burned down or tore down. Nobody will ever know how many times you mowed or... Or that you even lived in that house. All the atheists would have is to live joyfully with all that vanity. It doesn't even matter. I mean, think about it. There's been people who have lived their life, worked a job for 40 years, lived in the same house for 40 years, mowed the same yard for 40 years. Now they're dead. Their house is tore down. Nobody even knows that they even existed on this planet. It was all vanity. And if in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. When it comes to life on this planet, you need to be happy with your portion as a Christian. But you need to have that desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. But don't, don't let this world make you happier than what you have waiting for you on the other side. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt. And if there is no God, then you might as well just eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy your wife and kids. The atheist would take it a step further and many times enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. They would enjoy everybody else's wife if they could. Because sin to him is not a sin. Because he's his own final authority. He's doing what's right in his own eyes. He's going his own way. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. If there was no God, the atheist better enjoy everything he does with his hands, because after this life, that's it. Now for me, I like to use this verse to say I should do my best with everything my hands find to do. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Death is coming, and after that I can't do any more work in preparation for the judgment seat of Christ. So while I'm alive, and God's given me the gift of time and breath in my lungs, I need to be trying to work for God and do as much as I can for Him. I need to wake up early in the morning and do what I can for Him. I need to pray without ceasing through the day, witness to people, read, study, do all I can while I am here. But the atheist, he's just wanting to fulfill his heart's desire. And next, he wants to obtain worldly wisdom. The atheist has wisdom, but it is wisdom of this world. He pits the wisdom of this world against the wisdom of God. And 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Because 
they're spiritually discerned. And then in Ecclesiastes 9.11, it says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. The race is not to the swift. Sometimes the slower man wins. And I've seen races where the fast guy was in a big lead and then he trips and falls and the slower guy wins. He just happened to trip and fall right next to the finish line. So the slower guy won. And it was, the battle's not to the strong. I've seen a fight where the big guy lost to a small guy. In any given situ situation, I don't fold up and quit just because the odds are against me. Something may happen and I end up winning through time and chance. Solomon says, neither yet bread to the wise. Some of the most idiotic people in this country have the most food. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. I know men with a college education that can't get a high paying job because the people say they have too much schooling or too much experience. They think the guy will quit and move on to something that pays better. And Solomon says, nor yet favor to men of skill. The most skilled musicians are not played on the radio. They don't get favor. But the people that get all the praise is people like 6 9 and NBA Youngboy and Lady Gaga and other of these heathen people who don't have very much musical talent. And there's musicians with way more talent out there, but you don't even know them because... It's not favored to men of skill. The ones with the skill aren't favored enough to be promoted. Time and chance happens to them all. Ecclesiastes 9.12 For man also knoweth not his time. As the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it, fa when it falleth suddenly upon him. The atheist doesn't know his time. He thinks he has all the time in the world. He's seeking worldly wisdom. And the devil sees him like a little fish, and he is easily taken in an evil net when he sees the bait. The bait is the things of this world that seem sweeter to him. The net are the pleasures of sin that are for a season. And the atheist is caught in a snare like a bird that's not looking. Because he's been brainwashed with worldly wisdom. He thinks that life is about being good to your fellow man. Even though he's not good to his fellow man. But the, uh, the Satanist, he says, you know, he says it, it's not about being your own God. It's about doing what you want. Or no, he says it's not about worshiping the devil. It's about being your own God. And that you can do what you want to as long as you don't hurt anybody else. And they'll read books about from men who have worldly wisdom that's contrary to the Word of God. And Proverbs 117 says, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. When the devil sets the net for you, make sure that you're looking. Then it's in vain. Now, you don't want to get caught in the net, especially not the internet. Uh, Jeremiah 5.26 says, For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. The atheist and wicked men, wicked men of this world think they are trapping the innocent. They think that they're so wise. They think they've got it figured out. But while they trap others, they themselves have been trapped by the evil one. Ecclesiastes 9.13 says, This wisdom... Have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Now look at the illustration Solomon gives. There was a little city and a few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Notice this is a little city, and the bully comes. This is a great king. He besieges it. He got his army surrounding this little city with weapons and violence. And it says, now there was found in it a poor wise man. Now this guy has real wisdom and not worldly wisdom. 
and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Notice this little city was delivered by a measly poor man. And Proverbs fifteen sixteen says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Psalm 37, 16, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Proverbs 16, 8, Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. So better is a little city with God's wisdom than a great king who's obtained worldly wisdom and has gotten a large army. In Ecclesiastes 9.16, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Whose wisdom are you hearing? You're hearing the wisdom of Dr. Phil and Oprah. Wisdom and understanding will stick with you much longer than strength. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Those women on The View... And on these talk shows and Dr. Phil, their wisdom is foolishness with God. The wicked think they have the world by the tail. They despise the wisdom of the poor man. There are preachers that live up in the mountains somewhere that have more wisdom in them than all of these people on TV put together. But that wisdom is despised. In the tribulation, the rich who buy and sell would despise the wisdom of the poor saints. They would despise the wisdom of the two witnesses and they despise the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes 9.17, The words of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. If a man will listen to a wise man, it has more effect than the wild yelling of the wicked men of this world. The man that ruleth among fools has no respect. He is only served because they fear him, and, but the words of a wise man are heard out of respect if the hearer has ears to hear. And it says in Ecclesiastes 19, Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. The poor man's wisdom was better than chariots of iron. It was better than that great king and his large army. It was better than their spears and their swords. But one sinner destroyeth much good. Consider the sin in the camp with Achan in the book of Joshua. Consider how a husband can ruin a family because of his sin. If he found a wife, he found a good thing. He had children, and that is a good thing. But a life of sin would destroy all of that good. Your sin affects other people. Romans fourteen seven. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. The atheist thinks, I'm only hurting me. No, you're hurting everybody around you. Sin is contagious. It affects everybody. But this has been Ecclesiastes chapter 9 about the plans of an atheist.